Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC Nashville card from a betting perspective. And as you guys know, we take a very contrarian approach to selecting our wagers, whether it be on the money line or props. For those of you that were with us last week, we had an extremely strong week. We hit a couple of real big long shots. We hit um, Bobby Green by submission, plus like nine to one. We had Alex Pereira by decision, plus five and a half to one. We had Gross Medich, he was like a plus two to one underdog or whatever. But we don't want to be too results oriented. You know, all, all we're trying to do is, you know, come up with good, uh, good wagers. Right? And when I say good wagers, I mean just wagers that we feel as though that we're on the right side of the line. And for those of you that have not done this before with us, for us to be on the right side of the line, we have to feel as though the wager that we are placing is one that is not overly bet by the public, okay? The, the overall assumption is that the majority of these lines are relatively, uh, relatively solid. Um, and to get an edge in any type of wagering construct where there's any type of VIG, which is basically all wagering, you have to try to either be so smart that you know more about what the line should be, or you have to be sharp enough to realize what part of a line is being driven by bias, which part of a line is being driven by, I don't know, by, by, by psychology, by sentiment, and things like that. And when it comes to MMA, uh, UFC, whatever, people really have this idea that fights are binary, that there are only two ways that fights can go. So once the industry kind of settles on one narrative, then I promise you that that narrative is the overbet one, okay? So really, you can just sit back and wait to gauge what the public is doing. And once they settle in on one narrative, I'm not saying the net, that is wrong, what's, what they're predicting to is going to happen, but I promise you that that narrative is going to be the overbet one. So if you can continue to uh, train yourself to get a good sense of where market psychology is, you're going to be a much better wager whether it is you know, MMA, um, all sports, really, and, and not to mention the stock market. I mean, again, that's where I made most of my money, um, you know, being a hedge fund manager, gauging market psychology on stocks. You know, it's, it's any any 10 year old can tell you that you know, Apple is a good company, right? Any 10 year old can tell you that Coke is a good company or whatever. But I found that the stories that are extremely easy to tell uh, are the ones that are usually the ones that are overvalued. Otherwise, it wouldn't be such an easy story to tell. So um, we have been uh, applying that approach to UFC wagering over the last you know, several months, and we're, we're, we're doing extremely well. And, and we had some close calls for other really big long shots. Um, but nonetheless, my goal in doing these videos is not to have you guys win. Um, okay, yes, I'd love to have you guys win, but Honestly, if I could turn you guys into just kind of sharper thinkers in general, by the way that we analyze these types of things, then I would have really done my job. Um, again, this is really free. Um, I haven't put this part of premium yet. If you want more you know, content, if you do daily fantasy sports, you can check out True DFS, uh, become a premium member and play there. But this is, um, you know, it's part of, partly a wagering video, but hopefully it'll teach you guys how to think a little bit. Uh, nonetheless, uh, let's get into it. Let's go over the rules here. So we are going to be playing one bet every single fight. And again, that's not the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. Um, we're going to be betting the same amount each fight. And that is also not the greatest money management system in the world, but I don't care. And that's going to be always one unit. And one unit is lucky high times 10. So 180 each fight. Um, the other thing is I am going to put all my wagers in right now. And sometimes it lets me do it right here online, uh, and other times it uh, it does not. Um, uh, I have to pause this for just a second. As a matter of fact, I have to actually move money on here to make, because this is the sports book account, because I moved it back to Daily Fantasy. Where, and nonetheless, you'll trust me, but we will be putting these things in. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get into it. First fight, we have Odie Osborne versus Azu Almabayev. And it seems pretty clear what, what the public is thinking about this fight. Um, you know, Almabayev is coming over from Kazakhstan, and they always have a good good wrestling base. And 
He has some incredible tape on him, picking guys up, throwing them down. And Odie Osborne is – this is his, his Achilles heel is his takedown defense, not to mention the fact that Osborne is – Apparently, a, a you know he gases, he, he has bad cardio, and so this is a stylistic matchup, which is extremely difficult for Odie Osborne to overcome. So the idea is that Azu Albabib is going to just you know if he survives the first round, he's just going to keep grinding and grinding and grinding, and eventually Odie Osborne is going to uh, is going to get beat. So uh, the only thing that people are really betting here is is Azu by decision. Um, so we can't bet that. Or and we can't bet Odie Osborne by knockout because people are saying that Odie Osborne's that's his one path to to victory is knockout. So we could either to be contrarian, we could play Odie Osborne just straight up, or if we really want to get nasty, we could play Odie Osborne by decision. Um, that would be an incredible way to start off the card. So and I because I don't know what the line is, but whatever it is, I promise you nobody's playing it. So let's look at it. Odie Osborne by decision plus seven fifty. Let's go. Right. So we are going to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, moving on, we have Cody Durden versus Jake Hadley. Um, in the daily fantasy world, Cody Durden is, is showing up as a really good play because he has all this wrestling upside. But but the thing is, is that everybody is completely set on the fact that Cody Durden, again, he's going to gas maybe late. And Jake Hadley is very, very strong off his back. He's very, very strong submission deep, uh, submission from the ground. And uh, while you are seeing some people think Durden is like a good play from daily fantasy perspective, you're not actually seeing anybody pick it. You know, like for 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 a a fight which is minus you know 180 with Vig, for example, I'm seeing probably about five to one people playing uh, the Hadley side. So this is this is a seems like a pretty pretty strong play to just play Durden plus the money line. So uh, Durden plus the one sixty for one eighty. All right, uh, we have Sean Woodson versus Dennis Pazuka. Um, Dennis Pazuka is a late replacement of a late replacement of a late replacement, and this is actually a a a phenomenon which uh, I, I've noticed is that. The last replacement, if they're any good at all, people will usually overvalue them, okay? And that's kind of what I'm hearing about this fight. You have Woodson, who's just being regarded as a very boring fighter, and that Bazooka is finally getting his shot. And I'm seeing a little bit of love for the Bazooka side. The only thing I am seeing, though, is these short-notice replacements, they usually get um, a little under bet, okay? So while I don't think that people are – actually playing bazooka they're giving them a pretty good chance one thing nobody is playing is woodson finishing this guy okay if anything the the, the overwhelming narrative is that woodson is just a better boxer and he's just going to get the job done um so we're going to go ahead and take woodson inside the distance here let's see what this what this line is so you'll notice that i'm not i don't even care what the actual line is um oh they don't even have it up yet that's really funny so i'll tell you what we're going to do once this line comes out, we will be betting Woodson inside the distance, literally whatever it is, because whatever it is, is going to be undervalued. All right, um, we could actually check fight odds and see what it could be. But no, you'll just just trust me on this. We're gonna, we'll, we'll put it in for now. Actually, I, won't, I can't put it in, but I have to remember. Woodson inside the distance will be the official. Pick. All right, um. Jeremiah Wells versus Carlston Harris. Um, this is apparently going to be a banger. That's the one thing that people say a lot. So usually when something is going to be a banger, the things that you can't bet are pretty much anything with the under. Okay. So uh, Jeremiah Wells to finish, can't bet that. Even Carlston Harris to finish, you can't bet that. Um, so we're going to bet one of these guys to win by decision. Or we're just going to bet the fight to go the distance. Um, I just don't see much of an edge to, to, between these fighters because I'm seeing, I'm, I am seeing a little bit of love for both sides. So we're just going to just take this fight to go to the to a decision or fight inside the distance. Let's see, fight to go the distance plus one seventy five. Right. Um. Next one, we have Kyler Phillips versus Heine uh, Barcelos. 
Um, Marcellus is becoming a pretty popular underdog here. Um, the Kyler Phillips is coming off a long layup due to a uh, mostly a drug suspension. And Marcellus is just, he has a lot of back class and people are just kind of like hoping that he just shows up after basically not showing up the last couple of fights. Um, so I think Marcellus is actually the under the overvalued side of this. So we're just going ahead and, and again, just, just take what I think is, believe it or not, probably a pretty contrarian take here. We're going to take Kyler Phillips inside the distance here. So Kyler Phillips, let's see. Kyler Phillips, uh, we're going to do, hold on, winning method. Phillips by TKO or submission plus 180. We'll just go with that. Okay, moving on. We have Billy Carantillo versus Damon Jackson. Um, this is this is kind of amazing. I mean, there, there's there's well, I think that for a minus one eighty five favorite, I think the over, I think the 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 the, the tout ratio here is about fifteen to one. Actually, I should say fifteen to two because two guys who I think are super duper sharp are on the Jackson side. Um. But that's pretty much about it. Uh, everybody else just convinced that Billy Quarantillo is just going to you know, be a cardio monster. You know, and love betting against cardio monsters. I really like betting against fighters that are just pigeonholed into this one little thing, you know, that that, that can only be one result. Um, so, yeah, he's a, he's a cardio monster until his last fight where he got knocked out in the first round. You know, he's a cardio monster until maybe this fight, Damon Jackson wrestles him and, and controls him for three minutes. So, He's the cardio monster, but people are betting him at like 20 to 1. So we're just going to take Damon Jackson plus the 154. Right. Um, moving on. Ignacio Bajamundes versus Ludovic Klein. Um, okay. There's only two ways to play this fight because there's, I would say, 90% of the narrative is that Bajamundes is just bigger. He's better. He's younger. He might not have the finishing upside. So it's just a pretty safe decision. So Baja Mondays by just, first of all, Baja Mondays himself, you can't bet him. Right? Just everybody's on him. Baja Mondays by decision, you can't bet him either. That's the common narrative. The only thing you could do here is play Baja Mondays inside the distance or Ludovic Klein uh, by the, uh, or Ludovic Klein money line. So I think what I'm going to do, is I'm going to leave it up to fate. I'm going to think whichever one is bigger, I'm going to bet that. So Ludovic Klein, money line plus 190. Let's see what Bahamundes is inside the distance. Bahamundes inside the distance is plus 200. Oh, my God, it's so close. All right, so we'll do it. Bahamundes by inside the distance for 180. Hey, we set the rule, and now we, even though it's only 10 cent difference, we're going to do it. Right. Um, moving on, we have Tanner Bozer versus Alexa Kamor. Um, the only thing about this fight that everybody can agree on is that it's kind of a really, really crappy fight. Um, Bozer looked terrible at his last fight. Kamor is coming off a two year layoff. If anything, though, if anything, you're getting a little bit of dog money on Kamor. So we could knock him out. The only thing maybe you could play is either the fight in goes uh, finishes inside the distance because no one's really expecting that, or maybe even Bozier inside the distance. I actually think that is probably a fun uh, thing to do here. Um, th this is going to be actually pretty pretty contrarian. So let's do that. Bozier. Inside the distance is going to be what plus like 200 or something plus 250. So we'll do that. Tanner Bozer inside the distance plus 180. Now, again, I can't promise you these are the right sides, but I promise you they are the sides that are probably are they going to be the, 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 be the best value, uh, relative to again what the public is thinking. All right, um, let's move on. We have a couple of more, right? I uh, know we have several more. Diego Lopez versus Gavin Tucker. All right, this is just this happens all the time. You have 
a guy who is coming off of a really, really good loss, right? So Diego Lopez uh, fought Evloev, and he essentially, you know, almost had Evloev submitted. These guys are over, always over bad, and this one's no exception. Not to mention the fact that that Gavin Tucker, he's 37 years old. So again, father time is undefeated. That's another lovely thing that people just say um, without consider, considering the actual context of the fight. Um, also, he's 37 coming off of a two-year layoff. So the, the, all these are quote-unquote red flags. So it's just such an easy play to play Diego Lopez. So we are going to take Gavin Tucker here. Gavin Tucker plus the 142 for 180. Right. Moving on, we have Dustin Jacoby versus Kennedy, and just and can never get this one right. So this one is going to be like a really difficult one for me because I have to put my biases aside for this one and just presume that uh, that every that, that that everybody feels the same way I do. I saw Kennedy in his last fight, and he is just so huge and is so big. And I promise I would never bet against him again. Okay? The guy's just so much bigger and, and stronger than all of his opponents. I just knew I would never bet against him again. So I can't bet Justin Jacoby. I just can't do it, even though it might be the sharper side to do. So what I can do, though, is just give you the idea of what, what the public is thinking. The thing is probably going to be a striking battle that if – that the, the the finishing upside is probably with and uh, Kennedy, but the uh, the sort of the technical win is going to be from Jacoby. So what you definitely cannot do is play Jacoby by decision, and you can't bet Njikwe in inside the distance. So what we can do is to is so we don't violate the I'm never betting against this guy again. Uh, plus the. Uh, to not go against the uh, the public here. I mean, not to be with the public. We'll play NJ Kennedy by decision, maybe. Let's take a look at this. Plus 240? Yeah, that's good enough. for Kennedy plus by decision plus 240. Okay. Next, we have Jessica Andrade versus Tatiana Suarez. So Tatiana, so Jessica Andrade is broken. She in her last two fights, for, she she got subbed in, in very easy fashion by Aaron Blanchfield for openers, and then she got KO'd in the first round. She's essentially just basically speed speed fighting through her contract, and now she has a completely impossible matchup against Suarez, who is one of the the premier, if not the premier, grappler and wrestler in the world. And you have this this competition of styles between the two of them, and there's just really no way that Andrade can win this fight. Okay, um, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and better. <laughs> uh, so Andrade plus the uh, two ninety five for one eighty. The other thing you could do if you're if you're a little bit of a wimp, you could play this fight to go to decision. Um, Let's just take a look at it. Fight props. I mean, it's plus 200 to go to decision. How much do I gain by betting Andrade? Well, I guess if Andrade gets the KO, I'm going to want that. Boy, oh boy, this looks so juicy. Ah, we don't, I don't care. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll bet the Andrade plus the 295. And then finally, we have a uh, 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 main event: Corey Sanhagen versus Rob Font. Um, you know, Corey Sanhagen is just more well-rounded. Okay, let's let's just put it that way. Um, oh, I forgot about this. So here's the rules. I forgot about these rules. So what we always do in the last fight is we try to make all our money back that we're going to lose in the previous 11. Um, Cause we figure, I mean, we've made, we're making basically making 11 bets that have no chance to win. So we're going to play something in the last fight that is you're getting about 11 to one on, or at, at least. 
So, but we do have to figure out what the what the common uh, theme here is because we want to you know go against the common theme. So the common theme is that Corey Sandhagen is just more well rounded, and even though Rob Font might be a better striker, Corey Sandhagen can throw in elbows, he can throw in wrestling, and he's basically just going to go for a you know probably an extended decision here. So what we cannot bet is 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 uh, pretty much either of these guys by decision, okay? Sanhagen inside the distance, we could try that, but it's going to have to be an early round because the later ones falls within the narrative too much. We want to play font inside the distance. I mean, that's something that we can do, all right? Uh, we could also probably play font uh, by decision as well. I think any font bet is contrarian. And a, and a Sanhagen bet, which would be contrarian, is anything early. So let's see what of those things is more than 12 to 1. So you can't play Font just regular because he's only, you know, plus 275. But if you play Font by decision, now nah, plus 550 is not going to be good. Font by submission, plus 220. Is there any world where Sanhagen goes for takedowns? And Font just somehow reverses and get the submission. Am I going to end up playing this? No, probably not. We're, we're, we're just going to go with, with one of the obvious ones here. We're going to go with just Corey Sanhagen. I mean, it's the only thing that's over 10 to 1 that had that that fits that fits anything reasonable. Um, Sanhagen round four or, oh, my God, Rob Font to win by submission. All right, so this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Oh, here's another thing we could do. Oh, my God. Can I get away with this? I can play a draw at 50 to 1. So a draw, for a draw to come in, you're going to have to have somebody with a 10-8 round, right? Or somebody get a point deduction. So I guess the narrative for that, for that to happen, is for Sanhagen to get a 10-8 round with him on top, you know, pounding away, and Font winning three other rounds. You know what? I've never done this before. But I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm totally gonna do it. I'm I'm gonna bet a draw for 180 to win nine thousand. We don't even have to bet it for 180 to win 9,000. We only have to bet to win our money back. All right, so let's let's just do it for 100. So this is what we could do, actually. So let's do this. We're just trying to win our money back. So we'll bet 90 to win 45, 90, which is plenty. Okay. And then the other thing we could do is we could do the font by submission thing for 90 also, because that can win our money back also. But the only way we're going to do that, and this is the rules, Font's got to have at least one win by submission in his career. Otherwise, it's going to be San Hagen round four. So let's see. Rob Font, let's see. Uh, TKO, decision, decision, TKO, decision, TKO. There it is. Submission against Douglas DeAndraj. Does he have another one? Yep. He's got another one. We're doing it. So we're going to do Rob Font's win by decision. Excuse me, Rob Font win by submission. And then we're also going to do draw. Draw's already listed, right? Oh, this is going to be so, so sweet. I don't want to have 11 fights listed. It's supposed to be 12 plus the plus the other, plus the one that we don't know yet, the Woodson fight. So let's just go over this again. Um, so we're going to do, wow, Osborne by decision, plus 180 for seven, plus 750. Cody Durden, plus 160 for a 180. Uh, Jeremiah Wells fight goes to decision, plus 175. Kyler Phillips by TKO uh, or submission inside the distance, plus 180. Damon Jackson, plus 154. Bahamondes inside the distance, plus 200. Bozer inside the distance, plus 250. Gavin Tucker straight up, plus 142. Kennedy by decision plus 240, Jessica Andrade plus 295, and the two fights in the main event, we're going to have 
by, Rob Font by submission and a draw, 90 to win, uh, 90 to win, uh, what did I say? Like 4 million. Let's go. All right. Good luck, everybody.